Hey folks, time for some more JDOD. Dennis Howlett, I shaved for you, man. You shaved for me? I'm, yeah, I'm clean as a whistle over here. Uh, <laughs> don't, own, don't own a razor, mate, sorry. Yeah, I can see that. You're, you're looking shag. It looks good, though. <laughs> it looks good. So we're here to talk about a few different things. We want to uh, talk about a little bit on Google Plus and social media, but the uh, the entree the, the, in the center of the platter is, is Workday this time, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, so how did Workday uh, come to the top of the scrap heap here? What happened? Okay, so there's a couple of things here. One is, is that um, um, I'm engaged in a project that um, involves Workday at the present time, so um, I'm spending quite a lot of time getting deep into the weeds of what that solution is about and uh, um, having to dust off my old uh, training as, a, as an accountant in the process, which uh, believe me, believe me, nobody watching this wants to know about, right? Okay. Um, but at the same time, our good friend um, Jarrett, and I can never pronounce his second name. How do you pronounce his second name? Oh, man. Uh Bahazanak. Uh, I call him SAP Jarrett because I, I just try to avoid that entirely. Okay, Sap Jarrett, anyway. Um, he, he wrote this post that he put on to SCN where he was doing um, a little bit of an assessment and evaluation, if you want, on, um, on Workday based on the information that he's got and based on the limited stuff that he's seen. And uh, um, I, I personally thought it was pretty fair, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view. I mean, he basically papered the internet with it, and um, and that drew some controversy. So, um, do you want to talk about the controversy a little bit? Well, I, there's different aspects to the controversy. Um, there's always going to be a kerfluffle in the SAP community when a community member writes something about uh, why a competitive product might be dangerous to SAP or in some cases better than SAP. You're always going to have a bit of a fluffing of the the wings when that happens. Um, I mean, you've set a tone where you do that all the time, but but when someone who hasn't done that in the past does it, it definitely gets people's attention. So, uh, Jarrett was kind of the topic du jour for a couple of days here. Yeah, but uh, the, the, the difference perhaps between um, Jarrett and myself is that, uh, I mean, he, he's a He's got SAP running through his veins, hasn't he, to a large extent. I mean, that's his entire living, is right. working as an HCM consultant for SAP. So, you know, when somebody like that puts a piece out that... I, I didn't personally think it was particularly critical. I thought it was pretty well balanced. Um, but when somebody who's in that position does that, you know, you kind of think, hmm, do they have a death wish or something? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you would like to think that, that vendors including SAP, can cultivate the kind of community where there's a free exchange of ideas. Uh, but it doesn't always happen that way, and, and I think it's frustrating sometimes because, to me, I thought Jarrett took really good pains in that blog post to make clear that he thinks an, it's, a, it's an SAP's best interest to pay attention to Workday and take it seriously. And you and I know from talking to SAP executives, they certainly do. So it's not like he was saying something that isn't already discussed at the top echelons of the company. Right. I mean, in fact, you know, when I, when I kind of think about this, um, you know, was he saying anything that SAP itself doesn't know, right? And here comes dinner. Hey, great. Just a second. Listen, look at, look at this, mate. Look, look at this. Service. That's what I call service. Sweet. I didn't know we were going to eat and shoot. I would have heated up a frozen dinner or something. <laughs> anyway, back to the action. So, you know, I mean, it wasn't as though he's saying anything that SAP doesn't know, but, you know, like most software companies, they're not very good at taking criticism, are they? Or what they perceive to be criticism, so. Well, I think part of it is that not everyone within SAP is used to taking that kind of criticism. To SAP's credit, their executives are because they've put us in the room with them on a number of occasions, and they've gotten pretty used to it, and they've read the blogosphere. But, but yeah, you're right. Uh, this is a real issue with 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 vendors because it seems to me that when you work for a vendor, there's almost a, a, a sort of constant expectation that you're drinking a form of Kool Aid. You're, you're drinking a form of Kool Aid based on whatever color that vendor might run, whether it's red or blue or that's the Kool-Aid that you're drinking, right? 
and so the rank and file aren't used to seeing that kind of stuff and and also the other thing is that the short term people by short term i mean the people focused on closing deals sales people and also marketing people looking for lead gen they view any post like that as a threat to what they're trying to do uh, because they they don't want to hear about it when they go on a customer site right but unfortunately that's what happens right yeah um did, did, did you pick up on in, on the comments to to um, Jarrett's post, particularly? I did. I thought for the most part the comments were pretty measured. Uh, you know, the the thing is that whenever you make a post like that, there's the public con comments and then there's the back channel, and the back channel is a whole different can of worms. But as far as the public con comments are concerned, I think. The fact of the matter is there's a huge interest in the SAP community in things like in-memory and SaaS-based delivery models, and that's where Workday excels. So, Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, having spent some days with the, with the solution now, and I don't mean just sort of like half an hour. I mean, I've, I've now spent, um, how, how much time have I spent? Oh, crikey. I think I've spent about 12 hours with the solution now. Um, I'm pretty satisfied that it's competitive, so, you know, we'll see what happens. So tell me what you think about the fi financials part. I know some of that is under your NDA currently, but do you think do you think Workday is fleshing out a financial suite that's going to be on par with what they've done in HCM? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, on the basis of what I've seen at the moment, the, they've got very good business intelligence already baked into the solution. You don't have to do any coding, you don't have to do any programming, it's all just there. Um, you can reorganize your, your business extremely quickly uh, because they, they, organize, they organize things programmatically um, through, through people. They take the notion that people are the start of the business, which is, which is a fairly obvious thing for many organizations, but that's not normally the way that um, systems are set up. Um, so it's very, very quick and easy to do uh, a classic reorganization where, for example, instead of reporting by region, you start reporting by, say, line of business, right? Um, that doesn't take any time at all. Um, it's almost trivial, to be perfectly honest. And they have this killer concept of, of what's called a work tag. And it's actually an extremely simple idea. Instead of having to think in terms of codes of numbers and um, alphanumeric type codes, you know, sort of code A123ZC-2 would be, I don't know, whatever you want it to be. You just call things as they are in natural language and you use those as the basis for understanding how your business fits together. Now, you might say, well, yeah, but tags get real messy, don't they? Well, yes, they do if you allow them to do that. So, you know, Workday provides um, quite a good foundation for you to, um, to, to pivot off, if you will, uh, to create whatever structure you need. So you don't actually get away completely from the idea of the, the good old code block, but you can get a considerable distance away from it, and you can make the structure of, of how your system looks feel a lot more natural. So to me, it makes a huge amount of sense. Um, now, whether it makes sense to people in the market is, is, is another matter because you know, they're in early stage of growth, several hundred customers. Um, it's when they've got several thousand customers and we can start to assess that. But you know, they have several things that I think are, uh, are very good differentiators and which make them pretty competitive. And you have an analyst day, I believe, coming up with them yes. in, in a matter of a month's time or something. So. Yes, you should know more soon. Yes, and and I think we'll be able to, you know, we'll be able to say a lot more in the public domain because um, we did an analyst day with them last year, and I mean basically that became a tweet fest um, among sort of 15, 20 of us. Um, you know, there there wasn't much left to the imagination. Let's put it that way. Um, so, you know, I've been focused on on something very specific. It will be very very interesting to see what they what they have to say in a, in a month's time now. A lot of people get hung up on the technology. They sort of say, hey, you know, in memory, blah, 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 object database, blah, blah, blah. It really has nothing to do with it in the sense that um, this is the first time that I'm seeing uh, an enterprise class software vendor producing software 
that meets the needs of users from the get-go rather than as an afterthought. The fact that they have the object model helps them considerably. The fact that they're using the memory helps them considerably. But those are really technology decisions that they've made um, as, as a necessity for what they're trying to, to deliver, if that makes sense to you. But don't you think this is where enterprise vendors continue to get it wrong in their marketing because it continues to be about the technology, whereas it should really be about showing examples of how users are quickly able to configure these solutions on the fly yeah. and who cares what the technology is as long as they're getting the data they need and the embedded reporting they're looking for and the great mobile UI they want. You know, who, who cares what the technology is? Yes, and um, in, in my conversations, one of the things that I've said is that, uh, you know, I don't think that Workday is terribly different in this regard. They need to have it excised out of them to a certain extent. Um, some of the people that I've spoken to have, have got a better understanding of what needs to be done than others. Um, but all technology companies do this job. They do it all the time. That's because they love technology, you know. So what do you think Workday's biggest challenge is in the next calendar year? A very good question. Its its real challenge is going to be um, is going to be uh, market recognition. I mean, there are plenty of people, people like you and I, um, the financial community, competitors who are, are keenly interested in, in knowing what Workday is doing and what it's going to do next. But it really doesn't have a, a huge presence in 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 the public mind. So they have to do. Um, an exceptional job in building mindshare. I don't think they're going to have too much of a difficulty because you know people like you and I and others will talk about them and amplify whatever it is that they've got to say. But but nevertheless, um, they are a bit player as things stand at the moment. So they've got a lot of work. And wouldn't you say also that if you if you want to talk about yourself as an enterprise class vendor, that you also have to move beyond a domestic dominance say in the US market like Workday is very strong in versus don't you need to be able to play globally with global companies? Well anybody anybody listening to this or watching this will think that we rehearsed this and we certainly did but that's a, that's actually a really good question because um, yes they have got international capability yes there are certain things that they've baked into the system no it's not complete so to the extent that you might want to, or they might want to position themselves as, as capable of international operations. Mm, it would be a little bit of a stretch at the moment, but you're 100% right there, John. They've got to break out of that. Now, given the fact that these guys are all ex, the, the leaders at least, are all ex people soft, this is actually repeating a pattern that we saw before, because you know, this is how people soft. Uh, came to market, but it did it did very very well internationally. So, you know, there's no reason to assume that they won't. Um, but I think that uh, quite sensibly, they're concentrating on their home market, where they know they can get um, a significant number of deals and and good sized deals as well uh, before before stretching their wings. We'll see. All right. Well, I think that was a pretty good preview for the upcoming event. We'll see what happens. Okay. So. Um, we can't we can't record something this week without talking about G plus, can we? Google plus. Well, I call it G plus. No, I mean, absolutely not. I mean, I've I've been on Google plus probably every single day several times since it came out, and of course, consuming all kinds of interv interview content. I even listen to the Twitch show, which I never do. That's Leo Laporte's show. Uh, he's got a This Week in Google show, and I even listen to that uh, to try to pick up. Google Plus tips and tricks and and listen to they did an interview with Google about their intentions behind it and you know so I've kind of thrown myself into it which is not something I typically do I'm I'm usually kind of a laggard um, I mean for example you were on Twitter a long time before I was um, well you, so, yeah, but, but in this but having, in this case I was sorry John I mean uh, usually I'm very much the same I I prefer to sort of hang back and see what other people make of things before I jump into it but I mean. I just jumped into it. I haven't been out of it for like a week or ten days, which is pretty nuts. Yeah. So, so why why is it getting traction with with so-called influencers and and people like us that like to share media and content? And what do you think the the key is there? Um, it's different, isn't it? It's it's a new shiny toy. It's not Twitter. It's not Facebook. It's taken a different approach, um, and I think quite um, quite important here is that Google is being very open 
about how it's developing this thing. And it's constantly interacting with those influencers to make sure that they're aware of changes that are going on. And it certainly seems to be listening to, to what people are saying um, in terms of feedback, which ain't Google. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're sort of like 10,000 machines, aren't they, or robots or something. Basically, they, they're, they're very much more machine-oriented than they are people-oriented. So I think a fundamental change in the approach there. But also this thing called circles, where you can put people in and you, you've got that asymmetric way of being able to communicate with them, is uh, it's pretty compelling. I, I really, really like it. Yeah, I do find myself wondering if some of those concepts around circles are a little too uber geek for some. I mean, I have, I have a hard time imagining a lot of my high school Facebook pals gro grokking that or having any need to uh, move over to that platform. But for people like us um, that are interested in online collaboration with our colleagues, um, the circles are great. And the Hangouts, uh, I mean, you and I did a fabulous Hangout this week. Yeah. Uh, and, and for those who haven't experienced it, it's pretty phenomenal because, I mean, you can simulate it a little bit on Skype, but Skype is limited in terms of the amount of people you can have easily yeah. or, or that you don't have to pay for. And the other thing is that Skype is kind of siloed. So if you and I are having a talk on Skype, no one can really see that it's happening and jump in in the same way. Whereas with the Hangout, people just kept up piling into the room, you know, and, oh, there's John Appleby, oh, there's David Hall, and suddenly we're having a talk about uh, you know, enterprise collaboration and, and why some enterprises are centrally run and some are decentralized and then just shooting the, the shit or whatever and you got five cams on screen and even in beta mode the thing was pretty much working. I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. What I liked about it, that, that hangout was great by the way, but I mean what I liked about it was the fact that um, if, if you were talking then your camera would, would come to the front. If David was talking, his would come to the front. There was a real turn taking capability in there, which, which you can't get with Skype. Yeah, so there's definitely some, some aspects. I think the other thing I would point to is the threaded conversations, yep. uh, which, which obviously you can't really, that's one thing Twitter has trouble accommodating, and Google Plus can really do that, and so you can track interesting conversations and come back to them later, uh, and you have no, no character restrictions. So there's definitely some good things. I think... Uh, I think the extravagant talk about Google kill, uh, Google Plus killing off Facebook and Twitter is pretty ridiculous at this point, but I, I'm impressed by the traction. And it's funny because if I had to pick a big site that I think Google Plus can kill, I might pick LinkedIn. Uh, I just feel like LinkedIn has really dropped the ball with a lot of this kind of collaborative uh, discussion. They focus so much on one-to-one -one networking, mm -hmm. and I, I, I could see Google Plus really biting into what LinkedIn does. Absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, it's a moving target. Um, it's very early in the game, so we'll just have to see how it works out. But for the time being, I like it. I'm sticking with it, and we'll see what happens. Do you think it could ever have enterprise relevance? I know you blogged a little bit about that. Um, well, <laughs> a number of people agreed with me, a number of people disagreed with me, and, and largely they seem to disagree because of the way in which they see Google's business model. But I think that there are enough pieces of, of the so-called collaboration puzzle inside that solution for it to be pretty attractive to, to quite a number of organizations, particularly SMEs. I mean, I can't see large organizations getting their heads around it. Um, but I, I genuinely think that there's some, uh, there's some potential there. Google will do what it always does, and that's its own thing. And I'm sure that we'll end up with a Google Plus that's splattered with bloody adverts or what have you, but hey, you know. That's the benefit of being an outlier early adopter, I guess. Uh, How's dinner? Dinner's, dinner's really good, actually, John. I mean, I actually, I, w I would like you to talk some more so I can actually get to my dinner, if that's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you want me to talk about? I, I could talk about the some of the social media discussions we have with SAP this week, if you well, want. Well, that would be entertaining. <laughs> yeah, so... I entered into a webinar with SAP and the SAP mentors on SAP's uh, social media strategy, right. which uh, the the guest of honor at the webinar was Brian Elifritz, who's um, got a leading role in SAP's social media, uh, several groups I think he uh, has his, his fingers into. and. So it's basically a candid hour-long discussion about what SAP is trying to do with social media, 
what it's doing right, what it might be doing wrong. And uh, <laughs> I came into the event with a little bit of a chip on my shoulder because I have a lot of problems with what SAP does with social media. Um, and so it was interesting to come in and, and try to you know figure out how to diplomatically express my views and, and have a good dialogue instead of being a jerk. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I thought it was a good discussion. And I, I think pretty much any vendor can benefit from this type of thing because I, I really see few vendors who really get this right. And, and I can crystallize this for you in a nutshell. And what, this is one thing I said, said in, a, in the call, which is I compared two different product groups within SAP, one of which I will not mention, but you could think of many that fit this description, where they might have some people tweeting, but they really don't get it. And they engage in what I would call a drive-by reply, which is they reply to you, but it's superficial engagement. They're not really interested in digging into the crux of your problem. And that's the issue with social media is that when you start getting into it, you start unraveling like an onion because it, it sheds a light into what you're not doing organizationally to truly collaborate and listen. And so, so, so what vendors get into trouble with is they think, oh, we got to go out and tweet and broadcast. But what I found interesting is that we've had a series of engagements with the Gateway team inside of SAP. And as far as I know, I don't even know if the Gateway team has a Twitter handle. But what they do is they've engaged with the mentors on a regular basis. They've given us access to uh, sandbox systems, and they've talked with us about the product and where it's going. And the mentors do all the tweeting for them. And that's the thing about social media is that if you engage, then the other people will do the, the heavy lifting for you. And a lot of vendors don't understand that. Take the Workday event, for example, last year. That was a very successful event because you guys liked what you saw enough to go out there on Twitter and say, in blog and what, what have you, you had a lot to say about it. They didn't have to set up 10 broadcast channels and put together all this you know, prefabricated like manufactured buzz. They just created something meaningful and the rest of the thing took care of itself. And I think that's one of the big issues vendors need to figure out. Yeah, I mean, I give, I give SAP a lot of credit for trying. Um, but you know, the fact of the matter remains is that I've turned a lot of their Twitter accounts off uh, in, in the sense that I've blocked them because uh, I don't want to hear the broadcast crap. Um, and I understand exactly what you're saying about, um, uh, about different um, parts of the organization getting different parts of it. Uh, what, what, what were the upsides? I mean, we can be critical all night, that's the easy bit. I mean, what was the good stuff? Well, I think the good stuff is that, and this is this is my opinion only, but I think when you are when you when you summon up the guts to get in front of a, a group of opinionated people for an hour and say what are we doing wrong, that's a really good sign to me, um, because that's the start of real change. Is when you can really, you know, have the stones to do that and really have an honest back and forth. The other thing that I would point out about SAP is that sometimes the messiness and chaos that appears in their strategy isn't totally a bad thing because it means that they're not completely micromanaging every single person. Um, and I think some, some vendors have people on such, under such lock and key that you don't see anything. And SAP sometimes errs in the opposite direction where it seems a little anarchic. Like what, are the, what is this group doing compared to this group? Why is one group tweeting and why is one not? So, so, so I see the willingness to allow people an open platform being a positive. Um, so to me, that's, that's what I said in the beginning of the call was, look, SAP's well ahead of a lot of vendors in this area. And when you take everything into account that they're doing from the blogger relations program to the mentor program to the community network, you can't help but, but admit that they're one of the leaders in this area, even if they stub their toes sometimes. So, Yeah, yeah, I, 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 guess, that's, um, I guess that's the case. Um, hmm. Okay, so, so all in all, it was a good call from your perspective, yeah? Right, because I was expecting to just hear a big presentation about how great SAP is doing with social media, which is a trap they fall into sometimes, of patting themselves on the back a little too heartily. Yeah. <laughs> but but in, fact, in fact, it was a two-way conversation, and I really can't ask for more than that. But having said that, 
th what we always learn about these conversations, Dennis, is that six months from now, a year, a year from now, looking back, what's going to matter is the follow through, and that's where you really prove your mettle. And the follow through is always the hard part, and so that's why you're always a little careful about saying, "Oh, this was a really great meeting," because if they don't follow through on it, then what does it mean? So well, we'll see. Okay, so. Just one very specific question. What, what were they saying? Did they say anything about the use of the Jive framework for the uh, soon-to-be-reborn SAP Community Network? Okay, so the Jive discussion wasn't the focus of this particular webinar, okay. um, but there, there was, Jeannie Carboni was on the call, and she is part of the Community Network team that has been working on the Jive uh, migration, and I don't know everyone's specific roles, but um, it was mentioned during the call that Jive is going to make some of the issues that were being brought up go away because it's going to be a more socialized framework where it's easier to share and discuss and what have you because Jive is a much more user-friendly framework, SAP believes, than what they have now. Um, but that wasn't the focal point of that particular call, so we'll just have to see. I have some mixed feelings about the Jive project, but what I will say is SAP is really trying hard to consult with community members about this transition and to make it a good one so we'll see if they succeed but they're certainly involving people in that mm. um, in fact you almost have to you almost have to say no uh, <laughs> you know it's almost the reverse of like gosh I, I don't have any more time to help but you know give them credit for asking right 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 anyway listen we've been yapping for a long time but there's been a lot to talk about um, there's been quite an entertaining um, Tweet stream this evening about the i4 <laughs> and, and, and the upcoming tech edit. Yeah. Go on, go for it, John. You, 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 you're doing well. You're on a roll, mate. Uh, well, what I tweeted was that whenever Miko Yuck, uh, who's an SAP mentor and dashboard specialist, whenever she goes all caps, yeah. you know, you got to run for cover. <laughs> uh, you know, that phrase about hell hath no fury like a woman scorned yeah. uh, definitely applies in this case with, with Miko. And uh, I just, if I'm SAP, I definitely don't want to rub her the wrong way or, or you get what we see on Twitter now, which is uh, Miko going off on some changes she doesn't like with TechEd uh, having to do with dashboards. And I don't fully understand her grievances because she's got a bunch of all caps tweets, which doesn't give me a lot of nuance. Um, but it has to do with stuff around BI4 and 4.1 and uh, and, and the change in some of the workshop schedules for, for in TechEd that she feels like the dashboarding workshops they put on are, are somehow getting glommed into some bigger event. She's pissed. Um, so the Twitter stream is blowing up. I set up an at reply thing for her and there were like 20 in like five minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we shouldn't, we shouldn't laugh because I mean, these are, these are sort of uh, fairly serious things, but I think, I think it's quite funny really in one sense. Um, what was it? What was it? She, when she's when she's doing everything in caps, right? Then yeah. Then she's yelling. Yeah. Oh, and Johnny RP when and Miko York goes all caps. It's time to run for cover. Don't get on her bad side. At sap lol. Yes, it takes a lot. <laughs> yeah. You you obviously everybody has hot buttons, don't they, John? And bi four is Miko's hot button. Absolutely. SAP did something wrong. I don't know what, but I guess we'll find out in the days to come, well, at least from yeah, Miko's vantage point. I'm reckoning that Chip Rogers is going to get a real info. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw Chip's name mentioned in a lot of the tweets there. Yeah, so. well, he made the mistake of coming into the conversation, didn't he? <laughs> oh, hello, Miko. <laughs> Never mind. At Chip Rogers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope you're sitting... I hope you're sitting down, Chip. <laughs> I hope you're sitting down, buddy. I'm sure that I'm sure that they'll get it all sorted out. I said I said to her on the back channel. I said, "Well, why don't you run? You know, if we, why don't you uh, why don't you run your own thing then, right? And, you know, but it's always done with SAP. Well, maybe it doesn't have to be always done with SAP. You know, we'll see. Well, that's the one thing that that right that we learn from uh, various skirmishes like Certification Five stuff is that there's still room for a group of determined people uh, to, to make waves and have positive impact 
um, if, if you have fire in your belly, no never really means no, right? No just means course correction. We're going to keep going with this in another direction, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, pe people can do, do as they choose. Oh, I see Mark Finneran's in there. Um, Giving Tammy, giving Tammy Powell some support and uh, Hilda Fox source. Yeah. Pre conference hands on session sold out. No one should come crying. We warned you. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of think, uh, I, I got a feeling that Miko's lost this particular round, but you never know. You never know. I think this one's got, um, I think this one's got legs on it, don't you? Well, let's put it this way we haven't heard the last of BI4. And bi four one and the stuff around that. So, okay. um, and just to, just to close we'll just to close out, Tom Whalegum put up some tweet where he showed a, uh, a a photograph of somebody in an SAP um, polo and a golfing cap, obviously at some golfing thing, and he was talking about busting out to get one of these or whatever the hell. And I, I said, you what? You know, come on, dude. Um, why would you wear that? Isn't that a bit too kissing ass? And he wrote back and said, no way, I'd be so damned intimidating people's heads will be spinning. The black angel of enterprise software or something like that. The, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> I think Tom would look pretty handsome in that, in that cap and shirt get up there. Well, I, I can, That's pretty funny. I, I can't remember, somebody said, but, you, but you've actually got to have the physique to wear it properly. <laughs> Yeah, he look. I think that's uh, Ernie Els. He looks a little more pumped up than Tom typically does. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, maybe more more nutritional supplements or whatever. I actually uh, I actually t um, watched a uh, preview for the movie Green Lantern, and I was so disgusted by by the movie and the hype behind it that I tweeted that uh, if the movie actually is any good, then I would show up at Tekka dressed as the Green Lantern. Oh, really? Um, but uh, I'm still actually looking for someone to give me a definitive review of whether it's actually any good. But uh, I promised I would dress as the Green Lantern if the movie actually turned out to be any any. Well, if, if, that, if, decent, that happens, so. if that happens, John, we will be there to capture it on film, believe me. <laughs> yes, we will. Every, 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 every nauseating detail of that we will. <laughs> It'll be on camera, JDOD style. That's for sure. Uh, that's, uh, do you know, if I get, if we, if you do that, man, I'm gonna pay for the internet with you as the lantern. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet man. Anyway, with that, I think, I think, we, right, I think we're pretty much done for this week, don't you, John? That's a wrap. We, we start, we started all serious, and we ended up as all SAP mentors do in the gutter, or something similar. <laughs> okay. All right, mate.